Chimichurri. I feel like it's a little misunderstood. It could possibly be my favourite sauce to go with steaks and grilled meats. And it goes amazingly with grilled vegetables as well. So today I'm sharing with you this fresh, exciting recipe that is guaranteed to get your mouth watering. Let's get started. I'm going to begin by preparing the garlic. For this recipe I have three large cloves. Start by taking off the bottom or the root end. Then cut the garlic in half from top to tail. This is my foolproof way of peeling garlic. It works every time. So then just peel off your skin like this. Look how easy that comes away. Perfect. This is one of the first things I got taught in a professional kitchen and it's the best way of doing it. For this recipe, we want a garlic puree. So start with the pointed end of the garlic facing away from you and slice across the garlic, but keeping it together by the top pointed parts, not going all the way through. Then slice into it horizontally. Once if you value your fingertips, twice if you're looking for a thrill. Then just start to slice across it, getting a nice fine dice. This technique may be a little difficult at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be putting garlic in everything. Now we could stop at this stage, and this would be a fine dice, but we want to go a stage further than this. So using your knife, start to smear the garlic into the chopping board, then grab a little bit of salt and just sprinkle some over the garlic. This is gonna act as an abrasive and help to break everything down a bit more. Then continue to smear the garlic into the board using your knife and putting pressure on the blade with your other hand and very soon you'll have a really nice smooth garlic puree. The salt really does help with this, so don't skip that step. Okay, now onto our next method, a microplane. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple, it takes a tenth of the time, and you get a really nice smooth consistent puree, so I highly recommend this. Now get a bowl and place your garlic puree into the bowl. I'm gonna add a bit more salt because the microplane version didn't get any salt, but if you've done the knife version, then skip this step. Now add two tablespoons of red wine vinegar and the juice of half a lime. This could also be a lemon as well, so it'd be about one tablespoon's worth of juice. Give that all a mix. The acid in the lime juice and the vinegar and the salt are all going to help to break down this garlic and make it less potent. Now onto the parsley. Here I have a flat leaf parsley. It's about two handfuls worth. Split the pile into two so it's more manageable and roll up the parsley so it's into a tight little bundle. I've picked off most of the woody stalks, but I've kept some of the top younger stalks because they're fine to use. Once you have the herbs in a tight bunch, start to chop through them. I'm keeping the bunch cupped together in my left hand and just moving my fingers back as I chop through the herbs. For this chimichurri, we need a really fine chop. So once you've done that, we're gonna run our knife through more using this sort of motion. And after a minute or so of chopping, see how much volume it's lost. It's reduced massively. You need a sharp knife for this. This is pretty necessary. Otherwise you'll have like a herb sludge. You want nice separated herbs like this. Once that's done into the bowl, and we're gonna move on to our green onions next. Start by separating the green part from the white part. The type of green onions that I get in my part of the world have this large round white base. Most of the green onions I've seen in other parts of the world typically have a base that's the same size as the stem or the green part, but the method is the same regardless. Just start by chopping through the green part. We want this really nice and fine, so take your time. Similar method to the parsley, just moving back with your fingers and taking some really fine slices. Once you have all the green stuff sliced, just chop through it a little bit with your knife, just to break it down a little bit. And not too much, because this can go quite slimy quite quickly. Now onto the white part. I'm gonna cut the root end off and cut them in half. This is gonna help all the pieces of onion to separate and also give us a flat, safe surface to work from, so they're not rolling around. Then chop across them like we did with the garlic, and then chop across that again, so you get this nice, fine dice. If you have a few larger chunks, or it looks like it could be a little bit finer, then just run your knife through it a little bit more. But if not, into the bowl. And then we're gonna move on to our oregano. I've got nice fresh oregano for this. Really delicate herb, really, really nice. One of my favorite herbs. Just gonna pick the leaves back off the stalk, really gently, not to bruise them too much. Then I'm going to roll it into a little bunch like we did with the parsley and start to run our knife through it. Like I said, this is a really delicate herb, so we only really want to chop this once. So take your time and get a nice fine chop first time. If you can't get fresh oregano, then you can use dried, and I'll leave an amount in the ingredients list in the description. Now onto the chili. Traditionally, a red chili is used in this, but I'm using a green serrano chili. So take the top off, chop it down the middle, then to take the ribs and the seeds out, I just like to run my knife down in between the flesh and the ribs, 
all the way down one side and then all the way down the other if you have two ribs in there and then just tap out the remaining seeds. Now we're going to chop those into little fingers, little matchsticks. Take your time and get this really nice and fine because we don't want big chunks of chili in this, we want little, little pieces of chili. Once you have all of them chopped into matchsticks, we're going to turn them 90 degrees and we're going to chop across them. Exactly like we've done with the garlic, similar to what we've done with the parsley. You'll notice a lot of these methods for, for chopping stuff are very similar techniques. This is called a brumoir or a fine dice. We're almost just taking tiny little shavings of chilli, so we don't end up with any big chunks in our final chimichurri. You could also use dried chilli for this. In my opinion, fresh chilli has a, has a better flavour, has a flavour that dried just doesn't have. Also, fresh chilli gives you a texture, but if dried is all you can get, then, then use dried. That's all the preparation, now we just need to finish this. So I'm going to season with salt and pepper, I'm going with around a teaspoon of each, and then we can adjust later. And then we're going to start adding our oils. I'm going to start with an extra virgin olive oil, using around half a cup, or 125 millilitres. I like to use an extra virgin olive oil because it's a healthier oil and I think it has a good flavour. But you can't use 100% in this dish, it would be too bitter. So I'm going to use half of a vegetable oil or a neutral tasting oil whatever you have to hand to help to mellow it out a little bit. So we're going to mix this together, see what the see what the texture's like, see what the thickness is like. This is a little too thick for me, a little bit too gloopy. It just wants to be sort of running off the spoon slightly. So I'm going to add a dash more of the neutral tasting oil. I'm going to give it a stir and that looks great. That looks the consistency that we want. So give it a taste and adjust your seasoning, add a bit more lime if you need to. It goes great over these grilled vegetables, like really good and on the grilled meats as well, it's fantastic. Like I said at the start of the video, possibly my favourite sauce out there. And like always guys, ingredients and equipment list is in the description. Alright guys, and that's that. I really hope you go make this one soon. Trust me, you won't regret it. Go check out one of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.